What's good, y'all? It's Bull Ross back at it again with another video. So, we're back with another thoughts and opinions, but this time for Payback 2023, man. Shout out to everyone that was part of the live stream, part of the chat. You guys were amazing and kind of weird in the chat. Y'all were going crazy, but we had a good time never, uh, nevertheless. Uh, this show was a mixture of some great stuff and then just some stuff that just did not land like it was supposed to. Um, honestly, it was one of those type of situations where not every match was going to be as, you know, great as some of the other ones, but some of these matches i was expecting a lot more from and i, I feel like the fans then were in attendance uh, a few of these matches they they just weren't there energy wise so we're gonna go through this i took some notes tried to take as much notes as i possibly could try to get through this uh thoughts and opinions video as smoothly and quickly as possible for you guys not trying to take too much of your time let's get right into this one man so we got to start with the uh steel cage match between trish and becky lynch now i'm i i've been on record saying i have not cared for this feud i still have not cared for this feud but i will say this surprisingly i really enjoyed this match and these ladies put on a hell of a show they went out there and put their bodies on the line to entertain us if this match was on SummerSlam, i would have been okay with it this was actually a great way to start off the show crowd was hot for it um it got me into it even more towards the end for sure i enjoyed this and the women went crazy there was a spot early in the match where um trish stratus was getting her head rammed into the steel cage by becky lynch and afterwards i, I want to say this may have been that spot but afterward there was a huge welt on trish stratus forehead it was visibly just blown up so the fact that she had the battle scars and and to prove how uh you know tough she is that's you know got to give credit where credit is due and i believe this is trish stratus very first ever steel cage match so that's quite interesting but that that welt on her forehead definitely looked uh painful um there was the one spot where trish was getting over the steel cage and about to kind of you know, I guess you could say jump down, but obviously Becky was able to catch her, and it was and she was in one position where her body kind of laid down against well, like kind of fell through, like you know, she's hanging at the top of the cage, and her knees are at the top of the cage, so she kind of falls back, and I was like, yo, that I don't know how uh, <laughs> strong her knees are, but that made me cringe just off of hanging upside down by your knees. Why is all your weight is just dangling on the side of the cage? I thought that was kind of crazy. Don't know how she was able to do that without hurting her knees, but she was up there. And then it turned into pretty much Bexy. I said Bexy. <laughs> uh, Becky Lynch superplexing her as, as Trish is laying on the top of the cage and Becky Lynch is at the top rope. She have her in the position to superplex her from the top of the cage all the way down to the ring mat below just props to the ladies for taking that spot that was that was a holy s moment if i do say so myself um then uh at this point i was really surprised that even uh becky was able uh, uh trish was able to kick out because i thought the match was done you would think the match would have been done there but she was able to kick out and of course any typical WWE steel cage match or just steel cage match in general is supposed to keep people out of it, but somehow people find their way to get <laughs> into the steel cage match. Zoe gets involved or whatnot as Becky uh, is climbing the cage. Uh, Trish starts crawling towards the door to get out the cage. Becky stops her, grabs her legs, and then that's when Zoe gets involved and is trying to pull Trish out to help her win or whatnot. Ultimately, it doesn't happen that way. Uh, I believe Zoe uh, swings the door in uh, Becky Lynch's face. She gets in, gets in the ring or whatnot. It's like a two-on-one situation, no disqualification. Becky ends up closing the door or whatnot, and um, Becky ends up hitting her with the uh, the manhandle slam. And then um, this was a nice spot as well. They end up Trish ends up going to the top of the cage or whatnot. Becky chases her, hits her with the manhandle slam from the top rope, not the top of the cage, but from the top rope, and to get the one, two, three win. 
So good win. Obviously, should be done with the feud and, and moving on forward to something else. We will see whether she ends up facing Rhea at some point or they save that for a later day. We don't know who the next feud is, but we'll see what happens there. But some interesting things happen. So the match is over. We cut back to Zoe trying to help out Trish. Trish doesn't want her help. She's all battered up and bruised up. Trish ends up slapping Zoe. Zoe's still trying to help her. And at that point, uh, Trish pushes her. And Zoe's like, all right, I, enough of this. She closes the cage door or whatnot and proceeds to hit Trish with this. I love her finisher. The 0360. I said 0360. The Z360. Such a beautiful move. Hits her with it. Rips off or uh, takes off her uh, thank you Trish shirt and walks out. So maybe, maybe they're setting up a feud with Trish and Zoe. Since now Zoe is done with Trish Stratus, we will see how that happened. But it's going to be interesting to see what they do with that. Maybe that can help Zoe get over a little bit more. We will see. But overall, first match, quite enjoyable. Great way to start off the show. So next, we have LA Knight. Versus the Midge was next. Uh, Miz was next, but um, my boy John Cena was out there. You know, John Cena, the host of Payback. So he goes out there, crowd loving him, whatnot. Then the Miz comes out there. He interrupts John Cena as he's giving a promo or whatnot. And it turns into John Cena ultimately becoming a special guest referee for this match because he was trying to take advice from the Miz since the Miz has done a lot of hosting duties himself and he's like you gotta be spontaneous you gotta get into the action so that's how uh John Cena ends up getting a random referee shirt from somewhere some guy gave it to him at ringside and now he's a special guest referee for LA Knight in the Miz once LA Knight music hit crowd goes crazy as you expected and uh this was a fun match. I enjoyed this match. I do not think it needed John Cena, but maybe there's something they can, there's a story they may end up telling, and we're going to talk about that in a few. Uh, anytime LA Knight hit any type of offensive move, it was it was exemplified with a, yeah, the crowd was just pro LA Knight. Um, I want to say Cena at one point wasn't really doing good ref duty, because when they were outside fighting, outside in the ring, he wasn't counting them out. He wasn't doing a one count, two count, nothing. He was just kind of letting them brawl, and then they would get back in the ring. But then he started to try to uh, pick up his refereeing skills um, at one point when they finally got back into the ring. Uh, John was getting a little bit rough with LA Knight on the five count. You know how he was stomping, uh, what's the name, um... LA Knight was stomping the Miz in the corner, you know, crowd's going crazy. And he, you know, as a ref, you're supposed to give them a five count and then they got to break it up. And LA Knight wasn't trying to break it up. So he kind of, he, at first he, you know, he removed LA Knight. LA Knight kind of spun off of him, went back to the corner, started stomping out the Miz, attacking the Miz. And then it, it, the second time, John got a little bit more physical. Like, hey, you got to listen to me. And then that's when... L.A. Knight and John Cena started having a back and forth, and I was enjoying that. He was talking, about, I don't give a damn who you are. And it almost cost L.A. Knight the match there because of the distraction he was having. Um, the Miz was trying to get a cheap roll up by holding the second ropes, and it was funny because John saw it, so he kicked his arm, and he hit the get your arm off that second rope. And then the Miz ended up getting distracted Um going back and forth with John Cena and uh, LA Knight was able to capitalize a little bit from that. So LA Knight is, uh, is in a, a bad situation. It looks like the Miz is about to uh, get the upper hand here and he looks at John Cena and he hits him with the you can't see me to a loud chorus who's disrespecting John. Um, but ultimately it didn't work. Um, my boy LA Knight was able to get the clean win and um, crowd went crazy as expected. It was a fun match. I enjoyed the match for what it was. It's going to be interesting to see what they do for it going forward. Because in the ring, when he uh, when John Cena was trying to raise LA Knight's hand, he kind of, LA Knight took his hand away. Like he didn't want him to raise his hand. So when they go up to the ramp, John Cena takes off the referee shirt. 
and then they start talking to each other and the camera can pick up the audio he was like i ain't trying to be your friend or whatever because john was trying to hold out his hand to you know shake his hand like, i'm not trying to be your friend or whatnot like you almost cost me that match out there we can go back out there and we can get it going and i like that about I like that about la night he's not just no cookie cutter smiley face baby face if he has some issues with you he's gonna address it whether the fans are cheering him or not i appreciate that his back and forth with john ultimately he shook john's hand and he raised his hand or whatnot uh as a signal you know the guy won the match got his respect but i hope they do something with that he's like you almost cost me the match don't give a damn who you are that would be interesting it'll be interesting to see what they do with that so but definitely enjoyed the match fun it didn't need john cena but it was still a fun match now this is the one match early in the show that kind of died off for me and mainly because we had seen this match a couple weeks ago and i think they just recently added this match like yesterday or today uh ray mysterio versus uh austin theory for the united states championship i don't know if i would have put this match on the show i don't think this match needed to be on the show specifically i would have preferred gunther versus chad gable but i know that i think they're doing that for raw but i would have preferred that to be on this show to be honest with you but i didn't really have to take too much notes on this show on this part because the crowd was kind of dead i wasn't really as invested it wasn't a bad match per se but it's a match we've seen on smackdown with these guys already uh theory tried to take off ray's match yeah, that's a typical heel we try to do with ray didn't work uh theory now i love this signature move i wish it was his finisher move but theory hit and i believe this is what it's called theory hit the torture rack bomb on ray i really do wish this was his finisher I believe he was doing it in an independent scene as well bro it's so beautiful bro he carries him on the shoulder spins him off and uh hits him with like a some, some sort of like power bomb move it's a combination i love it bro that i really wish that was his finisher such a impactful beautiful looking move it re definitely reminds me of the blue thunder bomb love that move but he didn't get the win there and i also put crowd is kind of dead for this match but ultimately ray won and then that was pretty much it that that was it you know it was over and done didn't take too much time they didn't really expound on anything don't know what you do with uh austin theory i just think he needs to get off television for a little bit and y'all need to do something to his character because it's not really working right now. And I don't know what they do with Ray. I don't know if they're going to have him feud with Santos at some point, but we'll see. Now, the match of the night. And honestly, I would put this as one of my favorite matches from them in this title reign. Outside of their match they had with the Usos at WrestleMania night one, this may be their best match. KO. And Sami Zayn versus Finn Balor and Damian Priest in a street fight match. And boy, I have notes for days. And I, I don't even think I took all the notes because it was just that great. Let's get right into it. Fantastic match. Favorite match of the night for me. Just go over some of the highlights. Sami jumping over the top rope to take out the Judgment Day while Kevin Owens was getting jumped. Sami jumped over the top rope, took out both of the Judgment Day members. KO ripping off his shirt to show he had a Terry Funk shirt underneath, underneath, rest in peace, Terry Funk. And boy, did KO embrace the Terry Funk uh, vibes tonight. This was definitely a tribute to him because he showed out. KO was going crazy with the stomps to Damian Priest when they was in the ring. I mean, he was just stomping him just for 30 seconds straight, just going crazy, stomping the mud hole. Love to see it. Obviously, if I'm KO per storyline wise, these guys injured me a few weeks ago. I think I'm going to take this a little bit personally. All right. Then, as you expected with Judgment Day in the numbers game, Dominic gets involved in the match. KO and Sammy, after Dominic gets involved, they disappear off screen because now they're in the crowd area by production. They disappear off screen and they come out with, the, with hockey jerseys on and hockey sticks. But this time, KO's bleeding. I don't know what he was bleeding from, but he was bleeding profusely. There was no ref and an official to stop the blood, so they had no other choice but to film it. But he was bleeding profusely, and it was a beautiful sight because you don't see that much nowadays in WWE with street fights. I've always felt if it's a street fight, steel cage match, or whatever, something involving no rules, 
It should be a little bit of color from time to time. This was perfect. It made this match that even more fantastic when you see him rise with with this jersey on, but he's just bloodied up, and they start beating him <laughs> with the hockey sticks. Um, once again, I don't know what spot he ended up bleeding from. I may have to check it out again, but that was crazy. They fight off uh, Dominic in the back or whatnot. They start beating him up, and Dominic runs away. Love to see Dominic get beat up. They get back into the ring, and this, this is such a beautiful. I love this move by Sammy. He rarely wins with it. Sammy hits Finn Balor with the blue thunder bomb onto a stack of chairs. Such a beautiful spot. Look painful. Then Sammy uh was sent spine first onto some chairs placed in the middle of the ring. They were set up you know, like side by side, so it's like a bed of chairs. And Damian Priest flipped Sammy right onto the chairs. Oh my goodness. The pain, oh, just brutal, brutal spot. Um, KO has that dog in him in this match. I had to put that out there because KO, when Sammy was taken out, it's two on one and KO is still fighting, bro. He's still fighting them off. Sammy hits a senton off the kickoff announce table where the, where the, the announce team is for the kickoff show. They get to that area. Or what now you see the announce table and he hits a senton. Sammy hits a senton off of that. Uh to, um I believe that was to Damian Priest and Finn. I'm not I, I don't remember. I think it was one of them or both of them. And then, of course, at this point, uh Dominic gets involved again. But KO says, I'm a I've had enough of you, Dominic. So he starts beating them up by the production area. XLR cables and stuff right next to the kickoff announcement table and he lays them on a table and then he climbs up where the crowd is at off the balcony and my boy uh, jumps off the balcony and that shit was, it was high up jumps off the balcony through Dominic through the table and it looked like Kevin Owens hit most of the ground than the actual table itself and bro the crowd went crazy I went crazy the chat on YouTube went crazy bro that 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 was a holy s moment that flip off the top of the barricade where the crowd is off the balcony to Dominic through the table chef's kiss carnage bro at this point they was just they stole the show it, it wasn't even Close. So they get them back and they go back to the ringside. All of a sudden, JD uh saves Damian Priest in the match because I believe Damian Priest got hit with the stunner and I believe he ended up getting hit with the Luva kick or whatnot. And it was over. And then JD saved the match. And boy, did he pay for it. That's why I said Kevin Owens had that dog. Bro, he hit JD with a beautiful clothesline, turned them inside out. JD sold it on the, on the outside. And then he proceeds to pick him up, pop up power. Well, it was just a power bomb. Picks him up and power bombs him on the edge of the announce table. And it didn't break. And JD died. Rest in peace, JD. He literally just died. I was like, bro. KO got that dog in him, bro. Oh, my God. That was a horrendous spot on the edge of the announce table. JD didn't move no more. Then all of a sudden, Rhea Ripley comes out of nowhere and spears KO through the barricade. KO's done at that point. So now Sammy's about to get the job done because Finn Balor missed the double stump in the ring. He's by himself. He's about to get the job done. He hits the Huluva kick on, on, on Finn Balor. I'm thinking, oh, bro, he's going to win. And then Judgment Day is going to blame Finn Balor because he couldn't, you know, he, he was the reason why he got pinned. You know, Finn Balor got pinned. Everyone else did their part. Finn Balor got pinned. Oh, no, they're going to blame him and they're going to retain. But nope, Dominic came out of nowhere, hit uh, Sammy with the briefcase. And, of course, Finn Balor rolls over, pins Sami Zayn, and we have new tag team champions for the one, two, three. Crowd was booing like crazy. 
I was shocked they actually pulled the trigger and they won. They won. Finn Balor got the cover off the assist with, once again, Dominic hitting uh, uh, Sami Zayn with the briefcase and their title reign is over. But fantastic match. Took so many notes. Fantastic match. That was it. Just like that. And now all the Judgment Day members have gold. Rhea has the women's title. Um, um, Dominic has the NXT North American Championship. Uh, the North American title. And Finn and Damian Priest both have the tag titles there. The undisputed tag titles. Damn, I was not expecting that. It's going to be very interesting, but that's the story they wanted to tell. Everybody has gold. The question is, whenever Damian Priest cashes in, it's going to be very interesting what happens with that. But everybody has gold. They're the new top faction in WWE. At one point, Bloodline had all the gold. Almost all the gold. But now, these guys have all the gold. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But they are building them up as Judgment Day, as the top faction in WWE. And I didn't have a problem with it. It was fun. That, 10 out of 10. Best match of the night. Go watch that match. You will enjoy it. That was fun. And honestly, once again, like I said, this is their best match outside of Sammy and Kevin Owens. This is their best match outside of the match they had at WrestleMania. The match they had with Roman and Solo was good, but the storyline there was it was what was going to happen with the Usos. That was the best thing about that. But it was a good match, for sure. And that was a fantastic match, for sure. But this one, this one, in my opinion, is their second best match as t uh, for, for the titles, revolving the titles. So good, so good. So after that, we got the Grayson Waller effect. Obviously, Cody was the guest host. And he had an, a major announcement. And we're going to get right into it. Cody basically said, I pulled some strings in the back and I was able to get Jay Uso hired back in the company and now he's on Monday Night Raw. Jay Uso comes out huge pop. Huge pop. And I like the subtle storytelling there. Jay was brought back by Cody Rhodes. Because he said he saw something interesting on SmackDown. Now I'm thinking, is Cody going to request a trade and jump to SmackDown? Because if you're doing that, then you're trying to finish the story, right? But not yet. What they did was have Cody get involved in this bloodline situation, get Jay back in WWE. Oh, bruh. Oh, bruh. Get him back in WWE and get him involved. And if I'm Roman per storyline, what the hell's going on? Wh wh why is Cody getting involved in my family business? Why? Ah, oh, I love it. And it creates that dissension. Cody, Cody, that was a good move. That was that was a good move. That's the probably the best thing they've done with Cody in a while, in my opinion, is having him do a power play like that to get Jay to come over to Raw. And they be cool. Very interesting. Very interesting. Someone made a great point. They do war games at Survivor Series. Judgment Day members versus maybe Cody. Cody, Sammy, Kevin Owens, and Jay Uso. Now, here's the thing. Obviously, the story they can tell is KO is not going to be trusting so trustworthy of Jay because he still remembers what Jay did to him. And I hope they bring that up. I hope it's not water under a bridge. But I do think that will be very interesting. Judgment Day members versus Cody, Sammy, KO, and Jay Uso. I think that's good. But we'll see if that happens. But that was that was a shocking moment. And then Obviously, Grayson Waller talking trash about Jay, and Jay just super kicks him in the face. And the crowd goes crazy for Jay. Love it, love it, love it. Now, we get to Rhea and Raquel for the women's championship match. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. This match wasn't bad. Like, it looked good on paper, and they were doing some stuff in the match, but the crowd was just dead after the Cody 
segment and well Grayson Waller effect segment with Cody and Jay and the match we just saw for the titles in that street fight crowd was it's like they died for this match and it wasn't even bad but I think it the pace was too slow did take some notes here um first and foremost Raquel coming out there smiling I don't like that this person has been beating you up and you finally gotten your revenge here and there I wouldn't come out there smiling I'll come out there straight business because this is Rhea and I know that's her gimmick, but as a baby face, you can come out there and you don't have to be all smiles. Like LA Knight, he's a baby face at this point, but he's not smiling when he's coming out there with the Miz. All right? That's all I'm saying. I would not say she got to be mean bugging, but serious because you're facing Rhea and you know how dangerous she is. So I would have preferred her not doing that, but that's just a personal preference. Uh, I will say this Ra Raquel looks formidable. To Rhea. Rhea couldn't run her over in this match as she should not. Um, Rhea couldn't even clothesline Raquel to make her fall. They were telling that story like Raquel is a tough opponent. Um, Rhea ends up hitting a very beautiful drop kick. She hits multiple beautiful drop kicks on Raquel, hits a square in the face with the slow mo cam. I'm like, God damn. But that was a beautiful drop kick she hit on Raquel. Um, and at some point, uh, I believe something happened with Rhea's nose ring where she started bleeding from her nose and she was, she was embracing, she was blowing out blood, like blood, uh, snot, like it was just like, she just blowing it out on the ring. Like she even talking trash, like you made me bleed. Like I was like, okay, looking Rhea looking like a badass. I'm like, all right, I'm rocking with it. But the thing is they're hitting impactful moves. There was a few botches here and there, but it just was slow and just the crowd was just kind of dead. Um, Rhea ultimately goes for the bad knee. I'm surprised she didn't go for that earlier in the match. That's a story they've been building for weeks of Raquel's bad knee. She ends up going for the bad knee. And then at some point, Raquel turns it up, starts taking it outside the ring and running her against the ring barricade, throwing her, darting her into it, into it. Not the ring barricade, the ring post. Darting her towards the ring uh, post, like throwing her head first into it, throwing her spine first into it. And it was a pretty cool visual of her swinging Rhea just straight to the barricade, bro. Just just swung her around like a rag doll. It was a cool, cool visual. But once again, Dominic ends up getting involved, which costs Raquel the match. And that's how we win. End up with the, uh, the one, two, three victory. Uh, uh, Rhea retaining because obviously Dominic gets involved. I don't know. I'm okay if they... I don't know. I'm not saying I do think they need another match. I just don't know. Maybe there's a stipulation of some sort. Because I, I, like I said, the match went bad. I just think the crowd was just kind of dead and the pace was slow. Um, The one thing I can say with Rhea's title reign, it has... It hasn't really been that memorable memorable outside of her winning the title at WrestleMania. And it at WrestleMania against Charlotte. And it started off slow there, but it picked up. It crescendo. This kind of just stayed the same place. And it started to get a uh, get a little bit better, but then they went with the Dominic finish and it, it kind of faltered off. So I would like to see them have one more match, maybe a stipulation of some sort. And maybe people will be invested more and depend on where they put the match at in the next pay-per-view or where they, they place the match. That could help it out. I will give it one more. They can continue to feud because, I mean, Rhea needs some more people to feud with. Credible people, that make sense. And I still think Raquel still looks credible there. And the main event, Shinsuke versus Seth Rollins. I didn't even take as many notes as you would think for the main event of this show. I was thinking something was going to happen, but it didn't. Shinsuke versus Seth. For uh, the World Heavyweight Championship, obviously, Seth does his normal whoa, entrance. So, you kind of knew that was going to happen. I did like they created an anime comic style promo package before Shinsuke came out there. It was actually pretty cool. Actually, pretty dope. I like that. That was that was quite quite unique. I definitely like that. Um, I was not expecting them to hit the anime style narration with the comic book uh, uh, aesthetics to portray the story they're trying to tell of Shinsuke putting Seth out of his misery into becoming the world heavyweight champion. Early in the match, um, they came off evenly, sizing each other up. Uh, a lot of chain wrestling. 
they came off e uh, evenly killed. Like, it, no one seemed, you know, better than the other. They was just more so filling each other out. Uh, then, <laughs> this is our, our AO segment. Shin started rubbing Seth's back and looking at it like it was some tantalizing uh, cuisine. He was just rubbing on it. He was like, yeah. I was like, hey, yo. <laughs> he, I get that's the back is, his injured back is the, the, the target. But damn, bro, don't. Don't rub on my back, bro. Pause. What are you doing? Um, then, obviously, Shin starts to target Seth's backs with strikes and knees and stuff like that. Uh, Shin throws Seth from the barricade onto the announce table as Seth is on the top of the announce table while Shinsuke uh, was laying on the... Uh, oh, no. Seth was on the top of the barricade about to jump onto Shinsuke while he's laying across the announce table. Shinsuke gets up, throws him onto the announce table. Obviously, Seth selling his back from that announce table did not break they had a strong announce table today um i don't think it broke any at one point <laughs> the announce table was reinforced um beautiful uh frog splash from seth to shinsuke at one point in his match his frog splash was beautiful the height he got on it was fantastic but once again there were some highlight moments in this match here and there but the crowd was kind of quiet majority of the match it started to pick up towards the end, the pace a little bit. And I think the pace was kind of slow. It wasn't slow. It's just, I don't know. It, it, it wasn't hitting as you would expect a main event match to hit. It, the crowd was just kind of just sitting there. Um, they started doing trading elbows in the middle of the ring, back and forth. Um, and at one point, at one point, Seth is able to catch... Um, uh, Shinsuke in a in a position where he can hit the stomp and he hits the stomp and I'm thinking he's going to at least kick out he hits the stomp it literally came out of nowhere it, was, it wasn't even like no build up or set up to it he literally hits the stomp out of nowhere for the one two three win over Shinsuke like it was no build up it just even the framing of the camera angle they weren't even in the center of the ring they were kind of like at a corner so the camera was kind of close up and all of a sudden you you see him, and he's kind of, this guy's kind of close to the ropes. So I'm thinking maybe he's going to grab the ropes or something. No! Seth hits the stump out of nowhere. One, two, three. It wasn't even, wasn't, no buildup. And that was it. One, two, three. And then, not even long after that, while Seth is in the ring, you see Shinsuke in the back just mad. So you got hit with the finishing move. You're not even selling it. He, he was up, like, within a couple... Couple of minutes, not even that. He was just outside the ring, just walking around. Like he didn't just eat the finisher. That was so devastating. It took him out that quick. And that was it. No cash in like people were expecting or predicting from Damian Priest. You would think they would have cashed in because Seth is hurt. If that's the story they were gonna go, but no, that was it. Hit him with the cut, hit him with the stomp. One, two, three. Um, pin victory, and Seth is still the world heavyweight champion, and the show goes off the air. That's it. That's how the show ends. That was very anticlimactic. The match, I wouldn't say it was bad, but it just it had nothing other than the story of Seth's back, and even then, <laughs> at no point did I feel like, even though they were going with the Seth's back storyline, did I ever feel like Shinsuke was going to win. And it proved me, that proved my point. Because he didn't even reach towards the rope or kick out or nothing. He just, and once again, I'm all for wrestlers' finishers being protected. I just think it should be a build-up to the finish. There was no build -up. He just, boom, hit the move and that was it. So I'm all for no, you know, he not kicking out or whatever, grabbing the bottom rope, whatever the case may be. I'm all for that if there was proper build up and you're going to hit the finisher once. But I was not expecting the finish. Just came out of nowhere, anti and That was it. But other than that, man, the show was okay. Uh, first half of the show outside of the Ray and Austin Theory match was really pretty, really good. And that second half, it after the Grayson Waller effect, <laughs> maybe that is the Grayson Waller effect. After, after you sit there, sit through that, Everything goes downhill. But after the Grayson Waller effect segment, the show never really picked up the steam and energy it had. Uh, if I, on a scale of 1 to 10, I gave this show at least like a 6.5, bro. 6.5, 7. 
most likely six and a half because just that main event did not hit, bro. And honestly, in my opinion, this is probably the lowest rated main uh main roster pay per view that I've like the lowest rating that I've given the main roster pay per view in over a year and a half. Everything's been eight, nines, nine and a half, almost tens since SummerSlam of last year. Everything's been like eights and up. Maybe sevens. Sevens and up. But mostly it's been eights and up. This is the lowest I've personally rated the show a PLE in the last almost a year. Yeah, it's been like a year. Last year from, you know what I'm saying, from uh, last year's SummerSlam to now. So yeah, it's been about a year. It's the lowest. Still some good stuff on here. Once again, that tag team street fight match was fantastic. The women's steel cage match was really good as well. There was some decent wrestling on here, but it wasn't too much stuff that stood out. So comment down below. Let me know what's your thoughts and opinions on the show. What was your favorite match? What was your least favorite match? Where do you think some of these storylines are going forward? Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Road to 150K. I am still going to speak to YouTube rest of the champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.